Welcome back, fellow value investors to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be looking a week ahead and a year ahead. We are on a run of upward stock prices for seven straight weeks. It's been a fun ride, but it feels like it's going to come to an end. And maybe it will this week. Who knows? I wanted to share with you what I'm seeing that I think is going to affect the market for the remainder of 2023 and what opportunities I see to invest for 2024. Before I jump into my video, do me a favor and like my video, subscribe to my channel, and please leave comments. I love reading your comments. It's been a fun seven weeks, I have to admit. And to see certain sectors rebound, like financials, the financial sector is really flourishing, real estate's really bouncing back, and small caps and mid cap stocks are really doing well. It's been a lot of fun. For the year, the SP is doing great, the Dow's doing great, NASDAQ's doing great, and the Russell 2000 is beginning to really take off. Let me show you a couple of data points, starting with the last seven weeks. So for the last seven weeks, the S&P is up 14.6%, the NASDAQ's up 17.6%, the Dow is up 15%, and the Russell, made up of small mid-cap stocks, is up 21.27%. The small mid-cap stocks are really taken off, which is great to see. And I think those could continue on into 2024 because they were so beaten down in 2023. They were pretty much forgotten. So I think they have more runway to run. So small mid-cap stocks. Also certain sectors like financials is really doing well. The last two, three months, financials have been doing great. And I think they have more room to run. Industrials and materials companies are really beginning to take off now that we don't think we're going to have a bad recession. So a lot of things, I think there's opportunities in the marketplace in the right sectors, and there's opportunity in the right size uh, cap companies. 2023 most definitely is a bull market and bears have really been trapped this year. The S&P is up 23.4%. That's an excellent year. Only seven out of the last 29 years have been better. So we're having a really good year, but are we going to double down? Are we going to repeat? That'll be difficult, but we'll see. The PE ratio is at 24.59. So the PE for all companies inside the S&P, only nine out of the last 30 years have been higher. So we're on the higher side of PE. We just, we're having a phenomenal year that's going to end in less than two weeks. So I think it's setting up for 2024 isn't going to be as good. I think it's going to be difficult to repeat and have a year that's, that's, that's as good or better. I think we're going to have a year that's going to be more modest. And it's going to be a year to pick the right sectors that are going to work in 24, to pick the right companies. And I continue to think small mid-cap stocks are a good place to be because they were left behind in 23. The Magnificent Seven certainly were the big story of 2023, and they have gotten really expensive. They are worth $11.9 trillion for seven companies. Incredible. And they make up 30% of the S&P. It's such a big portion of a huge index. Having said that, I think the Magnificent Seven are really expensive. The only one that I think has a PE below the average is Alphabet. The rest of them have a PE above the average. Some of them, like Tesla, have a very high PE. So I believe that the Magnificent Seven will lose, lose value in 2024 and at best probably stay at the same value level where they are today. Looking at sectors, and I sorted the sector list by the sector that did the best over the last month to the worst. Real estate's really bounced back, but as I really study real estate, I think real estate might have a lot of headwinds. I think there's going to be some Trouble with the valuations of real estate, there's going to be some big write-offs, some uh, bankruptcies. There's just going to be some trouble in real estate. So although it's a short-term gain, I think there's going to be some long-term gain in that sector. Financials has really been working. I think it's going to continue to work. It was a beaten down sector in 23, and I think it's going to do really well in 24. Industrials, if we're not going to have a big recession, industrials are going to rally. So finding companies in that sector is a good idea. Same thing for materials. The same thing applies there. Consumer discretionary has just been flourishing, and I think it could continue to flourish, especially since we're not going to have a big recession. Healthcare can really take off. It didn't do anything in 23, which is really strange. Historically, it is a great industry, a great sector that returns really good returns for shareholders. And technology. Technology, I think, is expensive, and in some cases, it's well-deserved. They're really valuable. They're growing. But that'll be tested in 24. We'll see if technology is going to hold its value. And the rest of the sectors, I would be very selective. Consumer staples, I think, are risky since we're not going to have a heavy recession. 
Why would you need a staple? Communication services might be a good place to invest. For example, AT&T pays a really good dividend. That's an opportunity. And last, if oil rebounds and becomes more expensive, look for energy to really take off. It's really discounted this time. I continue to add shares to Chevron just because Chevron's an excellent company. And at some point, oil is going to rise. Here are my expectations for 2024. The recession is going to be mild. I think the data supports a mild recession. It might even be so mild that it's not recorded as a recession. Small interest rate drop in 2024. It's ex expected in the middle of the year, and it'll take effect toward the end of the year. Small mid-cap stocks will outperform large and mega-cap stocks mainly because mid, small mid-cap stocks were left behind in 23, have really good PEs, have great fundamentals, are growing, whereas mega-caps especially have really run up on price, have PEs that are concerning, are not growing very well, and it's very hard for very massive companies to continue to grow. So I think that's going to be an opportunity for me is to look for small mid-cap stocks, hang on to the ones I already own, buy more shares in the positions that I have, and find some new companies that are going to really take off early in 2024. Sectors, the right sectors are important. Financials is working, materials, industrials. There's some sectors that are going to re rebound in 2024, and that's where I could find some good stocks. Overall, I think the S&P is going to have a modest year, a year where the return for the S&P will be between zero and 5%. That's my expectation, just based on the fact that it is 2023 has been a really good year. The Magnificent Seven are so expensive that the idea that they're going to go up even higher is really hard to fathom. So that's my expectation on the S&P. So I got to do my homework on finding the right stocks and the right sectors that are the right size so I can outperform the S&P. So as mentioned, I think a pullback's coming either this week or next, and I'll be ready to buy shares into companies that I think are discounted. I have a good list of companies that are small, mid-cap stocks that I'm building positions on. I'd love to see some stock prices go down so I could buy more shares. Also buying into sectors that I believe are going to really work in 2024. That's my plan for the week. We'll see how it goes. For all I know, we're going to have another positive week. Going into last week, I expected that the stock market was going to go down. I expected the S&P and all the other indexes to go down in value. But I was surprised and they all went up. So um, it was great to see my portfolios rise in value, but it was surprising. Let's see how this week unfolds and see where the stock market ends at the end of the week. Do me a favor and like my video and subscribe to my channel and please leave comments. Thanks for watching and happy holidays.